All right, so today we're gonna to be making this. This is an RSA encryption and decryption script in Python that you can use to encrypt a message and send it to somebody else, and they can only decrypt it if they know the two prime numbers you use to make the encryption keys. RSA is an encryption method that's used to send secret messages between two parties, as well as make secure connections between two people or systems. I'm not an expert on cryptography by any means, but I do understand how the keys are generated, so I'll do my best to explain what's going on throughout the program. This is also my second time recording this video. I actually filmed for about two and a half hours and then realized my mic was unplugged, so yeah, fun times. So starting out in main, we have our encryption alphabet, alphabet E, which is a dictionary that maps every letter in the alphabet to a number 1 through 26, and a space character maps to 32. If you want to add support for punctuation or other characters, just add them as keys and map them to numbers that aren't already used. So this alphabet's going to be used to convert letters to numbers. We also need an alphabet to convert numbers back into letters. So we need the opposite of this dictionary. An easy way to invert a dictionary is to use a dictionary comprehension that maps the keys and values the opposite way. So we're mapping numbers to characters for every character and number in alphabet e dot items. So now we can translate from letters to numbers and from numbers back into letters. So in RSA encryption you start out by picking two prime numbers and then you use those prime numbers to generate the values that are going to be used in the equation. All the equation does is take the number that represents the letter, raises it to an exponent, and then gets the remainder of that number divided by another number. So the encryption keys we're generating are just the exponent and the number to get the remainder of. The only difference between encrypting and decrypting is the exponent. So you'll see what that looks like in a second, but first one of the functions we're going to need in generating those keys is going to find the greatest common divisor between two numbers. Now there's already a really good algorithm for finding the GCD of two numbers, and it's called the Euclidean algorithm, and it's fairly easy to make in Python. So we're going to define our function GCD with two parameters a and b, and we're going to say if b equals zero, return the absolute value of a, and we're going to use recursion here, so else, return GCD, our same function, with arguments b and a modulo b. So what this is going to do is return the absolute value of a, which is the first number once the second number is zero. And it's not going to start out as zero because it's a prime number, so it's going to execute the else branch. And when it tries to return, it's going to run the function again, but this time it's going to pass the second number b in as the argument for a. And the argument for b is going to be the remainder of a divided by b. And this percent sign is called modulo, and it's how you get the remainder of two numbers once they're divided. So once this branch runs, since it's recursive, it's going to run our whole function again and check if the remainder is zero. And if it's not, it's going to hit the else branch within this else branch, hence the recursion. And it's just going to keep swapping the remainder for the first argument and the remainder of the previous first argument divided by the previous remainder as the second argument. Now recursion gets kind of confusing when you try to explain it in words, but if you want to understand the Euclidean algorithm a little more, just look it up on Wikipedia. And if you don't, then you're in luck because you don't have to understand it to use it. Now the next function we're going to make is going to create our encryption keys, which are going to allow us to find E and D, which are the exponents we're going to use in the encryption equation and the decryption equation, as well as the other number that we're using as the modulus in that equation. So we're going to define prepare RSA with two parameters, P and Q, and those are each of our prime numbers. And part of the public key is going to be our first variable, M, which is just the product of the two prime numbers. The next variable is going to be called N0. It's part of our private key, and it's equal to the product of one less than each of the prime numbers. So it's P minus one times Q minus one. And the next part of the public key we're going to find is E, and it's the first integer relatively prime to N0. So to find that, we're going to do for I in range, and the lower bound for that range is going to be two, and the upper bound is going to be N0. Because the number that's going to be relatively prime to n0 isn't going to be 1. We can start at 2, and it's not going to be greater than n0, so we can stop at n0. So it's going to be somewhere between these two numbers. Now as we're searching through that range, we're just checking if the GCD of that number and n0 equals 1, meaning they're relatively prime. And two numbers being relatively prime is the same thing as one number being prime. It just means that their only common factor is 1. And we're only looking for the first number that's relatively prime to it. There may be more, but we're just looking for the first one. So once we find it, we can set e equal to i, and then we can break the loop because we want to stop looking. Now we're going to find our other exponent d, which is part of the private key, and it's equal to the multiplicative inverse of e modulo n0. Now you can either find d by using something called the extended Euclidean algorithm, or you can use e, which we just found, multiplying e by every number in a range up until n0, until the remainder of the product of e and i divided by n0 equals 1. So we can just do for i in range 0 up to n0, if e times i modulo n0 equals 1, then we set d equal to i and break the loop. And the three values that we find in here that we're going to use are n, e, and d. So we're just going to return those three at the bottom. Now that we have what we need to do that equation, we can make a function to encrypt our characters. So we'll define a function called encrypt with a parameter for character. Think of this parameter as representing a character or a number that's mapped to the character. So it's really going to be a number, but it represents a character. And it's going to return a number found by this equation. So it's that number as an integer raised to our encryption exponent, e, and it's the remainder of all of that divided by m. We want to cast it as a string so we can use this string method 
method z fill with two as an argument. This is going to format the integer to be two characters wide. So if it's anything one through nine, it's going to be zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, etc. Now these variables are undefined here because we haven't actually defined them yet. We just made the function that can define them. So in the actual program, we're going to let the user define them, but temporarily we can just define them like this. N, E, and D equal prepare RSA. With our two prime numbers, we'll use three and 11. Now these light up, so they're defined. And just a tip, if you actually want to encrypt a message effectively, don't use three and 11. These are the lowest possible numbers to use in RSA encryption. And some of the characters don't actually even end up getting their number changed, but this will be the easiest for computing during testing. Now our function for decrypting a character is pretty much the same thing. So we can just copy and paste the return statement here. All we're gonna change is the variable E for the variable D. So this is our encryption exponent and this is our decryption exponent. All right, that's enough math for today. So now we can put it all together and we're gonna start by taking it apart. And by that, I mean our next function is called split. The parameter is word and we're gonna return a list comprehension that returns character for character in word. So this will break text into its individual pieces. So if it's a sentence, it'll break it down into its words. And if it's a word, it'll break it down into its characters. We're gonna use it for both of those. So first it's gonna take the text that you give it, break it down into each word. And then we're gonna break down each of those words into its individual letters, get the number that the letters map to, do the encryption equation on each letter in the word, and then add the encrypted word, which is represented by a bunch of random numbers, and then repeat that for every word in the message until we've encrypted the whole thing. So our next function is called encrypt message with the parameter message, and it's gonna let us pass in any message and then encrypt it the way I just explained, whether it's from an input file or if it's typed in the terminal. So first we get the plain text message and save it to the variable plain text by taking the message argument that's passed into the function, doing dot lower on it and dot split. So now plain text is a list of every word in the message. We're gonna make an empty list called encrypted and then encrypt one word at a time and add it to that list. So we're going to iterate over each word doing for word in plain text, and we're going to get a list of each character in the word by doing care equals split word. And then we can encrypt every character in the word by using another list comprehension that applies our encrypt function to the encryption alphabet entry that matches each character. And we're going to do that for character in cares that we just got. So for each word, we're getting the encrypted characters, and we get the encrypted word by joining the list of encrypted characters that we just got with a space character. Now that we have the encrypted word, we can do encrypted dot append encrypted word, which just adds it to this list right here of encrypted words. So we're going through each word in the message, encrypting it, and then adding it to the encrypted list until we have the message fully encrypted. Once we have a list of each encrypted word, we can join it back into an encrypted sentence. And we're gonna join each word with an encrypted space character in between and spaces between the encrypted space characters. So we're gonna do dot join to encrypted, and we're gonna join it with this F string here that starts with a space, and then we evaluate something and it ends in a space. And what we're evaluating is just encrypted encrypting the number in the encryption alphabet that the space character maps to, which we can access by doing alphabet E at index space. And then at the end, we just return encrypted. And now we can make our function to decrypt a message. So we're gonna define decrypt message with the same parameter message. And this is gonna be pretty similar, but it's actually a lot simpler to decrypt a message. So we're gonna store the encrypted message in encrypted and it's equal to message.split. And then we're gonna make an empty list for the decrypted message. And this is gonna hold the unencrypted numbers in a message. So it's just gonna be a bunch of numbers that match up with the letters in the encryption alphabet or the decryption alphabet. Remember they're the same, they're just swapped. And then we need an empty list for plain text where we're gonna turn the numbers back into letters and add it to that list. So to decrypt the message, we're gonna do for character in encrypted. And then for each character, we're just gonna do decrypted.append decrypt character using our decrypt function. And then we're gonna decipher the message and turn the numbers back into letters with the decryption alphabet by doing for character in decrypted plain text.append alphabet D or decryption alphabet at the index for each character. So it's indexing our decryption alphabet for the number that matches to the character, and then it's just swapping it into the character that it maps to. Now plain text is just a list of each letter in the message, so we're going to join it with an empty string, dot join, plain text. Then we're going to return plain text at the end. Now I'm just going to go up here and get rid of this little line of code that defines N, E, and D, because we're about to let the user do that. And now we can work on all the user-facing aspects of the program, and we just need one more function for that to display the options menu. So we're going to define options with no parameters, and it's just going to be a print statement. Statement. And I'm not going to type it all out on camera, so this is what it looks like. So option one is going to encrypt a message from a file. Option two is going to decrypt a message from a file. Option three is going to encrypt a message in the terminal. Option four is going to decrypt a message in the terminal. So now we can go ahead and make our input file. It's going to be called input.txt, and we can just put it over here. And then there's two output files, one for encrypted, so encrypted.txt, and one for decrypted. And we can move those down here, and I'll just bring it up so you can see. So if you're encrypting a message from a file, you're just going to paste the message into this input file. And then when you pick either one or two, it's going to either encrypt it and the output's going to go to this encrypted file. And if you're decrypting it, the output's going to
gonna go to this decrypted file. So all we've done so far is make two alphabets and a bunch of functions that we're gonna use. So now we can actually start doing things. So the first thing we're gonna do is get the two prime numbers that the user wants to use to generate the encryption values. So those are P and Q, and P is gonna be int input. So we're getting input and casting it as an integer. And the message is just gonna be enter the first prime number. And Q is gonna be int input, enter the second prime number. And then we're gonna want a new line after this. So you can either do a new line at the end of the string by doing that, but I don't want them to look different. So I'm just gonna do a print statement below it. Uh, that's just preference though. Then we're gonna generate the values for encryption with the same line of code n, e, and d equal prepare RSA, except the arguments we're passing in are now just p and q, which we just got from the user. All right, so now we will do the user interface. It's gonna be a big while loop. So we'll do while true. And at the start, we're just gonna show the options with our options function, get the selection from the user through input once they pick from the options menu. And then we're gonna do a conditional statement with branches for each of these four options. So we have if selection equals one, and it's gonna be as text. We have elif selection equals two. We have elif selection equals three and elif selection equals four. If they pick anything else, we're just gonna print invalid choice and put a new line. So now I have the comments up that show what each branch does. And if they pick one, we're gonna encrypt the message from the input file. So first we need to get the input. So we're gonna do with open input.txt in read mode as fn message equals fn.read. And then we're gonna encrypt it and write it to the output file. So we're gonna do with open encrypted.txt in write mode as fout, fout.write. Then we'll use our encrypt message function on message. And that's what it's going to write to the file. Then we're just going to print a success message that's going to say file encrypted, file encrypted with a new line. And then to decrypt the message from the text file, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. So we can just copy that and paste it here. And we just need to change this comment right here to read encrypted input, change this comment to say write decrypted message to output file, change the file to write to to decrypted, and change this function to decrypt message, and change this print statement to say file decrypted. Now if they're encrypting from the terminal, we just need to get their message as input, say enter message message to encrypt with a new line and then we're going to print the encrypted message to them right in the terminal with an f string it's going to start with a new line say encrypted message another new line and then use our encrypt message function on their message and then throw another new line at the end and that's it and then to decrypt the message in the terminal it's pretty much the same thing again we're just going to copy this paste it here and just change the words to say decrypt change decrypted message decrypted message change to the decrypt message function and that's it now our option menu works and once they make a selection and that branch runs we're going to give them the chance to exit so we'll say the variable exit is equal to input it's going to print this message right here it just asks if they want to make another selection then there's a new line and then it tabs over here a little bit and says y to continue and the other key to exit and we do dot upper so they can type in y if they want to exit and it'll just uppercase it whatever way they type it in it'll work and we're actually going to put two new lines at the end of this just to space it out from the next time the loop runs and basically once they make their choice we're going to say if exit equals y continue and i think it actually makes more sense to call this variable continue because right here it says exit equals yes it kind of looks like you want to exit but continue is already a word in python so we could use it but i think it's just best to avoid so i'm just going to leave it like that so if exit equals y continue else we're going to break that's if they hit any other key they can hit enter and not enter anything and it'll just exit them out of the program and that's it for the program so we can test it out in our input file i'm just going to put hello world and if we run the program we're going to enter the prime numbers 3 and 11 and we're going to pick option 1 encrypt message from file and you can see it popped up right there and that's an encrypted message but as you can see the space character here is mapped to 32 and when it gets encrypted it actually stays as 32 that's why i said not to use the numbers 3 and 11 because while this encryption did work properly those numbers are just too small it's not changing them enough so to test out the decryption we're just going to copy this message put it in the input file and then look at our decrypted file and then we're going to pick option 2 to decrypt the message from file and i forgot to hit yes so we got to run that again pick 3 and 11 because we have to use the same keys that were used to encrypt this to decrypt it pick option 2 and it decrypts it right here into the file. We'll say yes, make another selection. And if you want to encrypt right in the terminal, it's going to ask you for a message so we can do cats and dogs. And it encrypts it just like that. Can copy that. Say yes, we want another selection option for decrypt message in terminal and paste it right there and it decrypts it to cats and dogs. Okay, so now this program works when you input two prime numbers, but that's not how actual RSA encryption works. In real RSA encryption, you use two prime numbers to generate a public key and a private key. The public key consists of two parts, N and E. N is the product of the two primes and E is the encryption exponent. The private key also consists of N, but instead of sharing E, you share D, which is the decryption exponent. So in practice, anyone with the private key can encrypt a message with that key 
but only you can decrypt it because you're the only one that knows the private key or the decryption exponent. So to change this program to generate public and private keys for you to use, we just need to do a few things. So first of all, let's add another option to generate a key pair, which is going to be a public and private key. We'll call this option zero because it doesn't have to do with encrypting or decrypting. We'll say generate key pair. Now we're going to move this part that asks you for the prime numbers. Let's make room for it in the conditional by doing if selection equals zero and changing selection one to an elif. Now we're going to move the part where it asks for the prime numbers into this branch. We're also going to move this part that generates the keys into this branch as well. So if you choose to generate the keys, then we need to tell them to you. So we're going to first print the public key and say public key, new line, and show each part n and e. So we're going to show n and then evaluate n, and then e and then evaluate e. And the same thing for the private key, except it's showing n and d. Now anytime a message is encrypted, we're going to need to ask the user for the public key. And anytime a message is decrypted, we're going to ask the user for a private key. So in selections one and three, we're going to get the public key. And in selections two and four, we're going to get the private key. So to get the public key, we just get n and e as an input right here. And we can do the same thing in selection three. And to get the private key, we're just going to get n and d as an input in selection four and in selection two. And for the functions to use those keys, we're going to have to add them as parameters. So in the encrypt and decrypt function, as well as the encrypt and decrypt message function, we're going to add the keys as parameters. So in encrypt, we're going to add n and e. Same thing in encrypt message. And then in decrypt, we're going to add n and d. And the same thing in decrypt message, n and d. And anytime we use the decrypt function, we're just going to have to add n and d as arguments. And same thing for the encrypt function. And there's also one right here. And then also down here in our conditional branch, anywhere we use the encrypt message function, we're just going to pass in n and e once we get it from the user here. Anytime we decrypt, we're passing n and d once again here, and then one more time here. Now if we go to run the program, we can hit zero to generate a new key pair. We'll start off with some more difficult prime numbers, so we'll do 53 and 61. Now the program generates a public key and a private key for us, so our public key has n as 3233 and e is 7. So let's go to encrypt a message in the terminal. We'll do 3233 and 7, and we'll just do cats and dogs again. It encrypts it like that, so we'll copy this here, make another selection, decrypt. It's going to ask us for the private key so it's 3233 and 1783. Now if we paste in what we just got it decrypts it back to cats dogs. I forgot to put and this time and let's try it one more time for the files. So if we decrypt a message for the file it's 3233 1783 and there you go it decrypts it in the file too. So if you like this video give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button. The link to the code you saw in this video today will be in the description. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas on how to improve or change this program. In the last video I did we had some really good ideas in the comments and I actually included those changes on my github so if I ever make any changes I'll be sure to put what they are in the description as well and I think it'd be really cool if you sent me some encrypted comments down below that is all for today thank you and goodbye